Today, I'm going to tell you all about my recent sailing on the Scarlet Lady. This was a five-night cruise that went to Puerto Plata in the Dominican Republic and Bimini Beach Club in the Bahamas. My husband and I were on this voyage along with my parents. If you'd like to hear all about our adventures, please keep watching. everyone. I hope you're having a splendid day and if you're new here, welcome. I am super excited about this video. I have sailed with Virgin on the Scarlet Lady a few times in the past, but we had a lot of really unique experiences this time around. Some of the highlights were going to a private party in a mega rock star suite, seeing the Scarlet Lady meet its sister ship, and going on a catamaran cruise in Puerto Plata. But this sailing wasn't without a few minor hiccups. I have a lot to cover, so without further ado, Let's dive in. Before we get into the details of the cruise, let's look at the moment when the Scarlet Lady met the Valiant Lady. They made an announcement about this on the ship so that we could go on deck and see the Valiant Lady. Let's watch the video. It was such a cool experience, and I've never seen another virgin ship except the Scarlet Lady. Now let's get into the rest of the cruise. I'm going to touch on staterooms, service, food, entertainment, including Scarlet Night, and the ports we visited. So let's talk about our cabins. My parents live in Ohio, and they take one cruise a year, so they like to spoil themselves and stay in suites. And my parents wanted my husband and I to also stay in a suite so that we could get the same perks, like going to Richard's Rooftop and Richard's retreat in the Bimini Beach Club. My mom and dad stayed in a cheeky corner suite with Biggest Terrace. Their cabin was really cool. The stateroom wasn't huge, but it was a good size with a bed and a small sitting area. But their terrace was enormous. It had an awesome wraparound balcony, one of the biggest balconies I've ever seen on a cruise ship. We stayed in a suite aft suite with Biggest Terrace. It was a nice size stateroom, about the size of a junior suite on other cruise lines, but we also had a very large terrace with a great view of the wake. We had no major complaints about our cabins. The staterooms were nice and the balconies were awesome, and both of our stateroom attendants were excellent. I'm not going to talk a lot about food because I have an entire video about the food on the Scarlet Lady, and I will put the link in the description box in case you want to check it out. But here's where we ate on board. For lunches, we pretty much stuck to the pizza place. I've said it before and I will say it again. The pizza is delicious. And for breakfast, we mainly ate in the galley. The galley is Virgin's food court and we would get made to order omelets. We did have brunch one day at Razzle Dazzle and it was very good. For dinner one night, we ate at the Wake Steakhouse. My dad and my husband love the steaks there and my mom loves the twice-baked potatoes. We also had dinner at Extra Virgin one night. That's the Italian restaurant on board. Another night we ate at Pink Agave. Pink Agave is my mother's and my favorite restaurant on the Scarlet Lady. I think the food is excellent. And finally, one night we dined at Razzle Dazzle. We had a good meal there and the servers were really friendly and fun. So you'll notice that that's only four restaurants for dinner and we had a five night cruise. Well, we had a problem on the last night. My parents like what they like to eat and they had no interest in the Korean barbecue restaurant or the test kitchen. They just don't serve food that they enjoy. On a previous cruise with my parents where we also stayed in suites, we simply asked our rock star concierge to please get us a reservation at one of the restaurants that we've dined at before and it wasn't a problem. But this time the answer was no. We couldn't get a reservation in any other restaurant. If we wanted to try and eat there we would just have to go down and take our chances that something would open up. Basically you can only eat in each restaurant once. The sailing wasn't at capacity either by the way. Not a huge deal but I wanted to point this out in case you are staying in a rock star suite. I don't know if this is a new policy or an existing policy that that they are now strictly enforcing. But like I said, on our last cruise, it was absolutely no problem. And this cruise, it was a no. So we thought, 
okay, why don't we have dinner on my parents' terrace and the suite aft suite with the biggest terrace? That balcony was awesome. We figured we would just have dinner there. So we asked our rock star concierge on the first night if we could possibly get a table for four on the last night. And again, the answer was no. In our previous cruises, the rock star concierge basically told us that let them know about any request and they will do their absolute best to try and make it happen. And they really bent over backwards for us. Didn't dampen our cruise. We still had an absolutely awesome voyage. I do want to point out, though, that service overall on the ship was great. On the other hand, it seemed like no request was too big for the mega rock stars, and that makes sense. They pay more, so they should get more personalized service. We were lucky to meet a very nice couple on board, and they invited us to a private cocktail party in their posh suite, and the posh suite is a mega rock star suite. The posh suite is really spacious. It has two bathrooms, a bedroom area, and a separate living room. Their suite was much larger than our staterooms, at least double the size, but the terrace was very comparable. They had their personal butler arrange everything for the cocktail party. They had a full bar, appetizers, and desserts. It was so fun and so nice of them to include us. We loved getting to party in a mega rock star suite. Oh, our mega rock star pals shared that their butler had set up a movie night for them the night before. When they got back from dinner, there were gummy bears, popcorn, chocolates, all kinds of treats on the table waiting for them so that they could have a movie night in their suite. And I thought that was so cute. Moving on to entertainment. We didn't see any shows on this cruise. On a previous sailing, I did see dual reality, which was pretty good. I have a full cruise review of that sailing that I will link at the end of this video in case you're curious about that show. After dinner each night, we would end up at the On The Rocks bar. We loved watching the live bands and musicians. On past cruises, we were really, really impressed with the talent, and this cruise was no different. The musicians on board are so good. Scarlet Night was another highlight for us. I guess because we were rock star guests, we were given a behind the scenes tour of Scarlet Night. They took us to various parts of the ship to watch the entertainment. Scarlet Night is a ship-wide party that culminates with a dance party by the pool. Usually you just have to be in the right place at the right time to see the performances. But on this tour, they escorted us throughout the ship to the various entertainers so that we wouldn't miss anything. Let's talk about the ports. In Puerto Plata, we took a catamaran cruise that we booked through Virgin. We took an open air bus to the boat. It was about a 30 minute ride from the port and a large portion of the trip was on a dirt road. It was an interesting ride. The weather when we set out on the boat wasn't great. It was a little rainy and a little windy. But the weather eventually cleared up and we had a good time snorkeling. By the way, the crew members on the catamaran were so much fun. The rum punches were flowing and it definitely had a party vibe. The snorkeling wasn't the best, but it was pretty good and we did see a lot of fish. I would recommend this excursion if you enjoy snorkeling. But just know it's a pretty bumpy 30 minute ride each way. If you don't book an excursion, I do recommend getting off the ship and exploring the port. The port area has a beautiful swimming pool and some bars, restaurants, and cute stores for shopping. These are all very close to where the cruise ship docks. I have a video all about the Port de Plata cruise port, which I will link in the description box below for you. And moving on to our other port, Bimini. We spent a few hours at Bimini Beach Club. As usual, it was a lot of fun. We had a few drinks, relaxed, and enjoyed the beach. And we had some lunch. Then we did something new that we haven't done on past cruises. We rented a golf cart for $80 and explored the island. To do this, all you have to do is hop on the complimentary tram and ask the driver to stop at Fisherman's Village. That's where you get off. You might want to mention to the driver that you plan on renting a golf cart. That way he will be sure to stop at Fisherman's Village, but they usually do. 
Riding around the island on the golf cart was a lot of fun. A lot of the buildings in Bimini look run down and it can appear a little bit sketchy, but Bimini is actually very safe. Renting a golf cart is a fun way to explore some of the other beautiful beaches on the island. So that's my review of our sailing and overall we had a wonderful time and it was so nice to spend quality time with my parents who I don't get to see very often. I did want to mention that Virgin had a really good deal to rebook when we were on board. We did end up rebooking. We booked a corner suite on a seven night cruise next January out of San Juan and we paid $4,200 which isn't too bad but they did give us $600 in bar credit plus $600 onboard credit. So it was a pretty good deal. If you are on a sailing and you think you might want to cruise with Virgin again, you may want to look into booking on board. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I have a few more Virgin videos coming up and I would absolutely love it if you would join my traveling party. If you'd like to talk Virgin cruising with me just a little bit longer, I will link to videos at the end that I think you might like. The top video is the full cruise review of my previous sailing. And the bottom is Seven Secrets of the Scarlet Lady, where I give you some of my best pointers to help you have a better cruise. Have you sailed on the Scarlet Lady? Did you enjoy your cruise? Leave me a comment below because I would love to hear all about it. Until next time, I hope you have happy and safe travels. I appreciate you and thank you so much for watching. Bye.